Hello students, in this video we'll discuss the Lactable Terra nonlinear system of differential equations, and this is a model of predator-prey dynamics. So we're going to discuss the Lacta Terra problem. And this is a predator-prey. system. Okay. And so what's the idea? So the idea is that we might have something like a, so let's let x of t be uh, the number of rabbits, for example, and for context y of t be the number or the population of foxes. Okay. And so what should happen in principle? Well, we should have something like this. We should have dx dt. How is the rate of, we should have in some sense, an exponential growth of rabbits, right? So we might have like an alpha times x. In other words, the, um, the prey grows very, very fast in the absence of a predator. The predator in the absence of prey will go down. So negative beta times y. So in other words, the, the population of the predator goes down. Every interaction that occurs, so the time is, it, it, the interaction is proportional to the product of the, of, of the populations. And so what will happen over here is I'm going to have a minus, so we'll negative, the product will negatively affect the prey, so it'll be a negative gamma x times y, and then it will positively affect delta the predator. So this is the Lacta Volterra system. So here alpha, beta, gamma, and delta. So alpha, beta, gamma, and delta are all greater than zero real numbers over here. So that's our Lacta Volterra system over here. Okay. And so let's analyze this over here. So we, we can clearly see that um, if we want to find the critical points of this, well, clearly the, the origin is a critical point. Can we find any other critical points of the system? Well, let's look at this. So let's find the equilibrium solutions. So the equilibrium solutions Well, of course, the first equation over here is really just what? It's really x times alpha minus gamma y, and then y times the quantity negative beta plus the delta x. To find the equilibrium solutions, we set these both equal to zero. So clearly, zero, zero is an equilibrium for this system. Okay? And that equilibrium is going to be what? It's going to be a saddle equilibrium since those both have opposite parities to each other. Okay? So zero, zero is an equilibrium. And then, of course, the other equilibrium happens when these other terms are equal to zero. So if y is equal to, if y is equal to alpha over gamma, and x is equal to beta over delta, then this point over here is an equilibrium solution. So I have the equilibrium solution of beta over delta and then alpha over gamma is an equilibrium. Excellent. Now, of course, what we want to do is we want to figure out what the linearization is of the system. So what's the linearization going to be? So if I linearize this system, I have to do the derivative of all these things. So this is my x and that's my g. So the linearization or Hessian matrix or Jacobian is going to be the x derivative of this first function over here, which is going to be an alpha and then minus gamma, minus gamma y. The y derivative of this thing over here is going to be a minus gamma x then the x derivative of this thing over here is going to be a delta y. And then the y derivative over here is going to be a negative beta and then plus delta x. That's our Jacobian. And so let's find our Jacobian at this equilibrium. So our Jacobian at the equilibrium at the point beta over delta and then alpha over gamma is going to be equal to what? Well, uh, this first term over here is going to give me a what? That's going to be an alpha minus... Um, alpha minus alpha, right? So this first one over here is going to be a zero. So we can see because what's y equal to is alpha over gamma. So the gammas are going to cancel out. You have alpha minus alpha, that's zero. When I plug in x equals, I'm going to have a negative gamma beta over delta. Down over here, what we have, we're going to have a delta, we're going to have a delta and then a um, alpha over gamma. And then down over here, what are we going to have? When x is equal to beta over delta, the deltas cancel out. We get a zero down over here, right? And so now we can see what's the spectrum of this matrix. So the eigenvalues of this matrix, if I put a negative lambda lambda, so the eigenvalue problem, the eigenvalues are going to satisfy what relationship. If I have a negative lambda, negative lambda, it's going to be a negative lambda plus this thing. So I'm going to have a lambda squared plus, I'm going to have an alpha, a beta, a gamma, delta, alpha, 
beta, gamma, delta over delta squared is equal to zero. So the solutions of this are purely imaginary. So lambda is equal to plus or minus i times the square root, that's of course a squared, right? Square root of this whole quantity over here, alpha, beta, gamma, delta over delta squared. And so we, the linearization fails because the real part of these eigenvalues is zero. So I need to do something else to examine what's gonna happen over here. And thankfully, if we can look at dy dx, let's look at dy dx and see what happens over here for this system. So the question becomes is, how do the other solution curves behave around that equilibrium point, okay? And so what we can do over here is we can note that dy dx is going to be what? It's going to be negative beta y plus delta xy over alpha x minus gamma xy, okay? So we can do from the numerators, I can pull out a y. So this is going to be a y and then a negative beta plus delta x all divided by pull out an x from the denominator and I'm going to have an alpha minus gamma y. Okay, excellent. And this is a separable differential equation. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get, take all the x's and leave all the x's on one side and put all the y's on the other side. So I can if I separate this, I'm going to have a dy times what? It's a dy times alpha minus gamma y over y like so, is equal to, multiply the dx by the other side, dx times what quantity? Times dx times a negative beta plus delta x, all divided by x over here, like so. Good? And so now, of course, what happens when we integrate this thing over here? When we integrate this thing, integrate both sides, what are we going to get? We're going to have this first term over here is going to be an alpha over y, so that's going to be an alpha natural log of y. That's going to be a negative gamma because the y's are going to cancel out. There's going to be a negative gamma y is equal to, is equal to, this is going to be a negative beta log x and then a plus delta x and then plus a constant c. So if we rearrange this over here, what, what are we going to find? We're going to find by rearranging this that alpha log y plus beta log x and then minus gamma y, and then minus delta x is a constant c. And so the solution curves look like that. And if you plot these curves on, on a computer, what you're going to see is the following. If you have the x-axis and the y-axis over here, what you're going to see is you're going to see there's going to be this equilibrium point over here. That's going to be our equilibrium. That point over there is really what? Is really beta over delta comma alpha over gamma. That's our equilibrium. These other trajectories over here, these other trajectory curves are closed curves that surround that equilibrium. So the other trajectories over here are these they have periodic solutions around that equilibrium point. So there are other periodic solutions. And so these things are closed curves, closed curves. And so that tells me that even though I, I cannot use linearization to conclude that it's a center, this equilibrium point is a center for the system and there's a periodic structure. So as the, as the, pre, as the, as the prey grows in population, there's more of them for the predator to eat. And so then the prey declines in population, the predator grows, but as there's fewer, it becomes a cyclic, there's a cyclic behavior and the equilibrium is exactly at that point given by the dynamics. Thank you very much.